I'm Cheryl Giesbrecht. Welcome to our program, Transform Through Truth. I'm delighted to offer new insights and practical examples of how real God is. You might wonder exactly how this might work. So I invite you to join me right here each and every week. We are going to get to know God's Word and each other very well. Why should you make it a point to meet me? Very simple. Everything is better together. You don't want to miss out on anything God has for you. I love to share my testimony. I'm so thankful for the amazing things God has done. I'm a delivered drug addict, a stage four cancer survivor, and a former widow. You will also hear from amazing guests as we will often host them right here in the Transform Through Truth studio. By the way, these friends are experts in their field and will add to our wisdom about how God is working. It's going to be an exciting journey to get to know God better together. During the next few weeks, we are going to examine the names of God one by one. I can't wait for you to find out how God will show you more of His power and His presence. If you haven't ever studied the names of God, you are in for a treat. Imagine looking at a postcard of the Grand Canyon. Now, if you were to put several of these postcards side by side, you notice each individual photograph shows a small segment of a breathtaking view. In the same way, when we absorb truths about God one at a time, we can better understand Him. And as we learn these individual truths, this closeness with God will impact other areas of our lives. Understanding God's title shows us about His purposes and His commitment to each of us. Each of the names of God reveals something about His character. Psalm 34, 3 says, Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together. I am thrilled to have you join the journey. Today we're studying the name of God, Jehovah Shalom. Remember, the name of God, Jehovah, means I am. Jehovah directly connects to God's relationship to man. Jehovah is our Lord. He wants us to invite Him to be our Lord and Master. The chief meaning of Jehovah, as you remember, is taken from the Hebrew word Hava, meaning to be or to exist. It also suggests to become or specifically to become known. I love this fact because it illustrates a God who reveals Himself unceasingly. Shalom is a derivative of the Hebrew shalem, which means to be complete or sound. Shalom means peace, the absence of strife. Jehovah Shalom only occurs once in the Bible in Judges 6.24. Used with Jehovah, Shalom means the Lord is peace. I remember a time I was lying awake at 3 a.m., Thoughts were rolling around in my mind, along with conversations that should have happened. I felt a huge loss. My stomach was in knots, and my heart was unsettled and frustrated. My mind was twisting and turning about a decision that had been made for me. I had no say in the matter. I felt so alone in the inky blackness of the night, but then I called out to the Lord, God, I don't understand this at all, but I trust you and I submit to you, and I ask you for peace. Very soon I fell into a very deep sleep, and I woke up a few hours later, and I knew that Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace, had taken over my mind. Instead of thinking in broken sentences, I now sang aloud in this bright, clean morning with outrageous joy, and the battle was won. I was confident, I was purposeful, that God had chosen me for a greater work. Jehovah Shalom is the name of God that means, I am the Lord, your peace. The only time Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace, is mentioned in the Bible is in the book of Judges. So let's set the stage for this amazing name of God. Remember this season of time, it was quite a roller coaster ride. It was when God raised up a new judge. Israel would follow him for a little while, but then when the judge would die, they would fall back into their old ways of serving foreign gods. This cycle of sin, confess, sin, confess happens about seven times throughout the book of Judges. The story of Gideon is just one of the amazing story of these seven times, but it's in this revelation, this is the name of God that is revealed here, Jehovah Shalom and we are seeing a new character quality and a promise of God. In Judges 5, we see that Israel had lived at peace for 40 years under Judge Deborah's leadership, but after her death, they fell into sin. God allowed the Midianites to come in and raid the land of Israel. 
they destroyed all their crops, livestock, and everything else that would add to their sustenance or the livelihood of the Israelites. During this time, the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and told him that he would defeat the Midianites single-handedly. Gideon was afraid. He felt useless, but the angel said, Peace be with you. Do not fear, you shall not die. Gideon was comforted, so he built an altar and called the place Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. So let's read this passage together from Judges 6, verses 1 through 24. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern peoples invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep, nor cattle, nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count them or their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. Midian so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. When the Israelites cried out to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a prophet who said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians, and I delivered you from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you have not listened to me. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Orpha that belonged to Joash the Abrazite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. Gideon replied, If now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait until you return. Gideon went inside, prepared a young goat from an ephah of flour. He made bread without yeast, putting the meat in a basket and its broth in a pot. He brought them out and offered them to him under the oak. The angel of God said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened bread, place them on this rock and pour out the broth. And Gideon did so. Then the angel of the Lord touched the meat and the unleavened bread with the tip of the staff that was in his hand. Fire flared from the rock, consuming the meat and the bread, and the angel of the Lord disappeared. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed, Alas, sovereign Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace, do not be afraid. You are not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day, it's, it stands in Orpha of the Abrezites. God called Gideon a mighty warrior during the time the Midianites attacked the Israelites. It was there God revealed himself to Gideon in a new way. In revealing the name Jehovah Shalom through the peace that Gideon received, he was able to find strength to lead his armies to victory. Here's the scripture again, Judges 6, 24. Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, The Lord is Peace. 
In our application time today, we are going to learn three things about the name of God, Jehovah Shalom. Number one, God wants to meet us right where we are. Number two, God wants to give us peace. Number three, God's peace is accessed when we worship God. The Hebrew phrase translated, the Lord is peace, is translated Jehovah Shalom and occurs only once in the Old Testament. Shalom is a harmony of